Hey everyone, my name is Jackson. In this video, we're going to be going over the ideology setting on setting up a game and surviving the aftermath. When you're on this setting, there's actually not too much information that's provided when you're looking at this. If you hover over them, nothing appears. The only thing that it says is what tech focus it has. So there's three ideologies you can choose from. One is trust on basic survival skills. The next one is aim for progress and technology. And the last one is take care and protect the people. You can see that the tech focus is survival and efficiency, large scale production, and health and safety. This small description provides a little bit of insight, but it's still vague and ambiguous. Here are the five unique texts for each ideology. The ideology is identified at the top of the video. If you're here for just these texts, go ahead and pause this here. But if you're here for more in-depth analysis, stay tuned because we'll be discussing this in further detail. So let's go ahead and dive deeper onto each one and what they provide. We're going to start off with the basic survival skills one, where the tech focus is survival and efficiency. Each ideology provides five unique techs that are specific to that ideology. The first one on the list is survival skills, which provides a, a flat 25% production speed boost to trappers and fishing piers, and also their upgraded versions, which is the hunting cabin and fishing hut respectively. In my opinion, this is a really great tech for early and mid game. I'm also curious if this helps out with fiber production on the hunting cabin. If it does, this makes it a very solid choice. If it does affect fiber production, I would say this is an 8 out of 10. If it doesn't, I would say probably a 7.5 to 7. Either way, a solid choice for a tech. The next one on the list, still under food, is emergency harvest. This gives you 100% harvesting speed. In my opinion, I don't think this is a good tech to take as it's only viable situationally. You want to use this during catastrophes that could destroy your crops like a winter storm or a nuclear fallout. However, that situation could be completely avoided with a little bit of planning and would make this tech completely moot. I would rate this one a 2 out of 10. The next one on the list is under resources and it's called Lumberjacks which gives a plus one work slot. It's a good tech that's going to serve you through all parts of the game. The extra work slot is only beneficial if you can actually occupy the slot compared to a flat percentage production speed, like the skill we saw earlier with survival skills. Due to the fact that it applies throughout the whole game, it affects two different buildings, I would rate this a 7 out of 10. The fourth one is now under infrastructure, and it's called efficient heating, and this provides a 50% reduction in energy consumption by the radiator, specifically the radiator and also the industrial radiator, as you can see by the two little pictures on the far right here. In my opinion, this tech comes online late game for the reason that you probably already maxed out on electricity already. So you're probably still using burners because burners are easier to fuel with just firewood. Radiators also use end game material like parts and components. And those are very hard to come by. If you use radiators, this is a great tech to take. However, I personally rate this only a five out of 10. And the last tech under this ideology falls under community. Unfortunately, there is no safety techs under this ideology and you're only left with upscale tents. If you watch my other videos about tech, you'll know that I don't think tents are worth it and that you should be using tents as a temporary means to house your people until you can get to communal living, which you'll mainly be focusing on shanties and tenements at that point. And you can get to that tech pretty early on in the game. I find this tech a waste and personally rate it a one out of 10. We will now look into the progress and technology ideology. You can see now that we're on the progress and technology ideology, there is no survival skills up here. But if we go over to the right now, there's also no emergency harvest, but we now have fish fodder, which is specific to this ideology. You can also identify ideology technologies by the teal color that they provide here. And you can also see it, it says it right here that it's an ideology. If you hover over others, you can see what they're specific to. Like this is an upgrade. This is a building unlock. This is efficiency. The first one on the list is fish fodder, which provides a flat plus three to fish production for aqua farm. This is a decent mid to late game upgrade if you're focusing on aqua farm. However, I find aqua farms too costly with 60 concrete as a requirement and needing a large body of water, and they also produce pollution. I personally rate this a five out of 10. The next three are under resources. The first one on the list is sledgehammers, which provides a flat 40% production speed to concrete scavengers. This is a decent mid game upgrade, but falls off late game because you're not using concrete scavengers after all the concrete above ground is gone and you're mainly relying on industrial mining to get the excavators to go underground. I would rate this a five out of 10. The next one on the list is junk recycling, which provides a flat plus two parts production to mechanic shop. This is a fantastic upgrade. 
this tech provides a flat bonus production for a component that's used for buildings in mid to end game. You're going to need parts for pretty much everything, and this can become a bottleneck in your progress. I rate this one a 10 out of 10 because of how important it is. The fourth one on the list is called conveyor belts, which gives a flat 25% production speed to auto extractors. Now keep in mind this is auto extractors. This is not the same as regular extractors as you get from industrial mining. You have to unlock mass production, which unlocks the auto extractors. With that being said, it only affects the auto extractors and therefore it would only work for a late game upgrade. However, because of how strong it is, I still rate this a seven out of 10. The last one under this ideology is called panel coating, which provides a flat 40% durability increase to both solar panels and large solar panels. I personally believe that most durability upgrades are a waste of tech and should be saved for last. However, solar panels are prone to malfunctions and lightning strikes. This is applicable from early to late game, but I would still rate this tech mediocre at best. I give it a three out of 10. We'll now look at the last ideology, which is take care and protect the people with the focus of health and safety. This ideology has nothing in food, nothing in resources, and nothing in infrastructure. Everything is only in community and safety. The first one on the list is solid foundations, which gives a 40% durability increase to shanties. In my opinion, I prefer to use tenements over shanties. It's also a durability upgrade. I tend to find those useless and I save those for last. I give this a one out of 10. Up next is reinforced concrete, which is also another 40% durability increase. I'm not sure why there's so many durability upgrades in this ideology. And this only applies to houses, which is also a late game tech. I think durability upgrades should be saved for last. Since this is a durability upgrade, I give this another one out of 10. Moving on to the safety part, we have guard patrols, which provides an extra slot to guard posts. This is another bad tech that just provides another work slot for a small build. Since it's a small building, space really isn't an issue for you, so you can just build more guard posts if you need more protection. I rate this a 2 out of 10. Up next is calibrated lathes. This provides a 40% production speed boost to gunsmiths and grand guns. I've never really had any problems with gun productions in my games, especially with scavenging outposts and finding guns on the world map. The degradation rate of firearms doesn't really seem to be an issue. And I would say this applies to mid to late game. I would rate this a 4 out of 10. And the last one for this ideology is prescriptions, which provides a healing speed boost of 33% to both medical tents and field hospitals. This seems like a solid choice to take as it applies to all parts of the game. I would personally rate this one a 7 out of 10. Now that we've gone over all three ideologies and their specific texts, let's give an overview and my thoughts on each one. If we take the average of all five scores across each ideology, we come out to 4.6 for survival and efficiency, 6.0 for large scale production, and 3.0 for health and safety. In my opinion, if you are struggling with the game early, survival and efficiency is probably the best one to go with since it focuses a lot on the early game. I say take the survival and efficiency early game because the flat percentage boost to trappers and fish beers and also their upgraded versions. You can also benefit from an additional work slot on the lumber yards and the logging camps. Emergency harvest is also beneficial in case you forget to harvest your fields before a catastrophe. Upscaled tents is unfortunately a waste of tech and efficient heating for radiators doesn't really come into late game. If you're someone who's experienced and are trying to do harder difficulties, I highly suggest taking the large scale production ideology as it benefits you for mid to late game stuff. This ideology is good for pretty much any player, but it mainly focuses on to the mid and late game. The biggest star of this show is junk recycling with the plus two parts production to the mechanic shop. The other items like panel coating, which is just a durability increase to solar panels, sledgehammers, which gives concrete production speed boost of 40%, as well as conveyor belts for the auto extractors, and of course, a plus three to fish for aqua farms, which is a decent upgrade. All of these texts are pretty solid, but the biggest one here is junk recycling. That's a huge one. I do not see a scenario where taking the health and safety ideology is beneficial. Most of the tech provided there seems to be a waste with the only beneficial tech 
being the prescriptions, which gives that flat percentage speed boost to healing speed. And that's it for wrapping up ideologies on surviving the aftermath. If this guide has helped you in any way, I'd greatly appreciate a like and perhaps even a subscribe. Uh, leave down a comment below if you learned anything new or if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. I hope this was helpful, and I'll catch you next time.